Hey, everybody. Well, it's time for What's Up Wrestling. We are back. Scott Fishman is here from TV Insider. Lots to discuss, but we need to start with AEW Wrestle Dream because a lot went down. My head was exploding. Um, but uh, I actually thought overall it was pretty, it was great. And there's some things I didn't love, but we'll get to that in a minute. So what was your takeaway of this, Scott? I, um, I'm, I'm, should we go through the card quickly or? Yeah, I mean, that's great. I think overall, you know, AEW always delivers on pay-per-view. So that was nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Um, but, you know, once again, the ending, you know, controversial. So, it, you know, it gets people talking one way or another, I guess. Uh, yeah, the ending was where I kind of uh, was a little confusing for me, which we'll get to in a minute. But we we started out with Jay White and Hangman Adam Page. That match got a lot of people really liked that match. I was wondering what you thought, and Hangman took the loss, and Jay won the match. And I'm still trying to understand why Hangman is so deranged. But anyway, <laughs> because Swerve isn't in it. It's point. 2024. He has, you know, there could be a lot of reasons why he's angry. Yes, of the deranged. Um, what did you think of the match? I mean, I think Jay White, uh, you know, I think great, great chemistry between the two of them but also just the fact that jay white got the win since he came to aew i feel like aew has not really capitalized on what he was in new japan pro wrestling you could say that about a lot of talent maybe here and there but for him he was brought up as this big talent this big signing and he kind of faded in the backdrop so i'm hoping that this win will kind of be a sign of things to come where they're kind of going to elevate him a little more and feature him a little more i was thinking the same thing jay white was supposed to be the big guy he came over it didn't happen there were multiple starts and it just never took off. And then I just don't know if they utilized him properly either. So it'll be interesting to see what they do now. And now Hangman took the loss. So I'm assuming he's going to go more deranged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because it's not that, you know. Um, that Mariah May and Willow Nightingale, I thought they gave a great match. I was sitting here really impressed with that match. I thought Willow held up well with uh, the glamour. Yeah, it's great to see, you know, Willow's been such a, you know, reliable person when it comes to like being featured, being entertaining, getting the crowd really invested. Um, they didn't have much time to build this match up. So I as far know. as like a story. So I thought they did a great job getting the fans invested and uh, they really impressed. You know, the women's division has has had, you know, a lot of more you know, the quality, higher quality matches in the last couple of weeks. Mariah May has really delivered as a personality and as a performer, as a champion, she's just getting started. So it's been pretty exciting to kind of see that come take shape. I think she's a very formidable champion. I think Mariah May is doing an amazing job. And the funniest thing was when she came into the press conference afterwards and like nobody had any Nobody had a question. They were all enamored. Like she looked the glamour. They're just like... <laughs> I'm leaving out of, I've got bruises. And they're like, well, you need to go get, you know, checked on. And but she had to sit, because I have to sit here with these people. And then they <laughs> asked like basically nothing to her, um, yeah. which killed me. I do want to talk about, so this angle, Jack Perry wrestles Shibata. <laughs> and they do the match. And the match is, I don't, I'm kind of whatever. And then everything breaks down and it's really exciting. So you've got Daniel Garcia coming into the ring who I believe now they're making a push, right? Is he finally going to get the push that he... Well, now that he's looking to be... Had some, he's kind of in limbo for a little while because of everything that's went on with his contract. He's going to WWE. He's not, so now that there's like a clear path that he's staying with the company, they can kind of really put more time and energy and investing in him. I think that's what the reason was. Yeah, so he comes in. They have the confrontation. He's going to be coming after belts. He's going to go after the TBS champion. You know, there was that thing that he was going to... I think he made a statement that he was coming after everybody now that he's with AEW, like he's going to go for the belts. Yeah. And then MJF comes out who we haven't seen in a while. And I thought the funniest thing, he's literally, he's literally on his throat doing his thing, stepping on his, you know, throat and doing his thing. And Adam Cole comes out. And the first thing I thought, of course, I'm sure you did too. He's running. He's going to break his ankle. <laughs> the ring, like, oh, oh, my God. The lock. Is, then it's like Final Destination. Like, maybe I literally, you need to I stop. Literally was like, to stop. <sighs> if that so, happened. So he runs down. I'm like, okay, okay. He's okay. Um, and then we get this. We get this, him and MJF. So are we to believe now MJF's the heel, Cole's the baby face, 
everything that happened with that double storyline where Cole was the bad guy is, is gone, right? It's like a reset. It's like, uh, you know, Men in Black, Will Smith did the, the <laughs> shot there where you, you forget everything. No, I, love- I mean, we'll see where it goes. I mean, you know, MJF has a, a great ability to kind of turn things around and make it, you know, logical, you think, or try to make it logical. And I, I'm sure they, hopefully they kind of are taking this into account what happened in the past and where it's going to go. Because he had this whole group with him. Like, where do they stand? And it's like, so we'll see where, it'll be interesting. Did you like that <laughs> that whole section? Uh, I don't know. It was a means to an end. You know, it's taken away from what we saw, but for the Jack Perry uh, Shibata. But, you know, you know, that's another match that really can build like, okay, here nor there. But um, just great to see Adam Cole back. You know, you, there's a lot of, there was a lot of speculation on, you know, his condition and where he was going to go as far as like his wrestling career. So, you know, and having more star power on the AEW shows right now is very needed. And he's kind of that breath of fresh air. And I think a lot of people forgot, I don't say forgot, but it's been in the back of mind, like how good Adam Cole is and what a star he can be. So I'm hoping, you know, this kind of jump starts everything again between the two because ne- they never really got to, to, to do the follow up, unfortunately. So I know I got to go back one second. Because the funniest thing with the glamour was when she's talking about Britt Baker, she had strep and she's like, she didn't she say something like, and she's back there filling fillers and teeth. I mean, she's- <laughs> yeah, that, that, that. Well, she, she was on commentary, I think, before that. And she said something about like doing root canal. I don't know, something with root canals and stuff like that. And I'm now, like, now, awesome. Britt and Adam are broken up, right? I mean, I'm not involved. I don't have no idea. But I mean... If, if you look on social media, you'd be like, okay, you're not seeing anything with them together. I mean, it's not our business, to be honest, but it's something to talk about because they are public figures. But um, it doesn't look like it. I mean, it, we, we could be wrong. I mean, we'll see. But <laughs> which is sad because I love them together. I, so <laughs> one of those wrestling couples you really want to cheer for. I write too. And that's what I want to say. And I am bringing it up because. When I see Adam, she was with him every step of the way during that rehabilitation after the brain injury. Yeah, she was very important to that. Yeah, he was very important, and he loved her and said that. So it would be said, and you, you know, we as people watching public figures, sometimes you root for these couples to be together. You get invested, yeah. And I was really invested in DMD and Adam. So obviously, it's none of our business. We want everybody to be happy. Happy, Just yeah. Kind of like, oh no, we're what's going on? But they uh, never got married or anything, too. So, you know, if it if it bad. did not, it didn't work out. If it did, or, I mean, hopefully, but if it didn't. You know, things now, happen. MJF's been very busy shooting movies, which he alluded to in the in the stepping on the throat of Daniel Garcia. Can you is, do you see him? Like, will he be back? Do you see? Like, they need him too. Like, these guys haven't really been on the show. Yeah, right. it's definitely hurt not to have all their star power. Uh, you know, if Adam Copeland out and if MGFs is not there, it's kind of a big void that you're you're filling. And so you want to bring up the other talent, but you also want to bring the draws that are kind of people are the reason why people are tuning in. And they're kind of losing momentum a little more a little bit right now because one, they had to move to the Tuesday night, the Tuesday show. That right. always kind of kills a little momentum. But now we have a pay-per-view coming off a of pay-per-view. So hopefully that'll kind of get things back up again. Then we had, the, to me, the I mean, I've never seen Will Osprey, Ricochet, and uh, Kaneski Tateshta. I thought that was the uh, that was like an unbelievable match. I expected, yeah. How can you not, from start to finish, that was amazing, in my opinion. But wow, what a shocker, though! What a big moment for Tateshta to win the championship. Which you know, you're all about making stars. The, this guy has always delivered on sh- big shows too, and he's had big wins before, like Kenny Omega and things like that. But I think getting him that big win there, I think, it was really helpful for him long term. And the he, other two can rebound from this. So what I wanted, story. What I wanted to say to you was, can you? Did you see? The audience was completely rooting for Takeshita. Like, let's go. Fans are crazy, you know. Did you expect that? No, I mean, I thought Will Ospreay all the way. I mean, and the fact that just shows you how deserving the fans think, you know, whether you're heel, babyface, I think we're at a point right now where you respect a wrestler and their journey and you respect their performance, you know, as artists, just like any other, you know, movie star or anything, Broadway. So same thing in pro wrestling where it's just there's this, you have a night, and it could be just a night where it's just something in the air. The atmosphere is just different and you can't plan for it all the time. 
And here, you know, you're getting the crowd. You know, I don't know if AEW even anticipated the reaction that he got, but he did. And it was, you know, it was a great moment for him. So that was interesting. And then Don Callis and the screwdriver and Kyle Fletcher. I think they botched the Kyle Fletcher thing. My understanding <laughs> is didn't they announce it was him before he actually took off? Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Fletcher. Uh, it's oh. like uh when Ho when uh not as to that level, but I remember when Bobby Heenan like well, whose side is he on? We're Hulk Hogan at Bash of the Beach. Like so it's kind of like oh but you know it still doesn't take away from the you know what they're trying to do here which is really interesting. So now what I'm seeing is we've got Takeshita there's a feud we've got Kyle and Osprey, but does this free Will Osprey up now to go for the big championship? If Danielson is out, Moxley, I'm thinking Will goes now to the that's money right there. Yeah, I I think we'll take a break from him and Ricochet for now. You know, they had the their match, and then they're still open ended, and then this where they're open ended. So this does give him a chance to to reshuffle and. And I think that's money right there with Moxley and, and Osprey. Osprey, who respects Brian Danielson, could be like, listen, I don't know if it's actually going to happen right away or it's going to happen at World's End or yeah. what, but yeah. there will come a point where people are going to stand up for Brian Danielson. And, and you saw the reaction that a lot of like Orange Cassidy and others have had. So they might start out with them first, kind of thing, like other, and then, but it's definitely that's the money I match that, right I there. See I think the money match coming. Yes. Somewhere. Maybe in 20 monster baby face or monster, you know, baby face monster heel right now with Moxley. It's it's just the stage is set here, I think, for that. Um, and then Swerve Strickland comes to the ring. Even that I thought was good because he you're like, is they're building a new story. They're building a new story with which I'm assuming Lashley's gonna show up next. And you've got Benjamin MVP against Swerve. Yeah. A lot of people were uh, thinking we were going to see Lashley at Russell Dream, Bobby Lashley at Russell Dream, but didn't happen. But, you know, it's we had a lot of big moments on that show anyways. So it, I'm actually happy that they resisted the urge because sometimes they don't resist the urge of bringing a new face on when you already have so much going on. They don't kind of like spread it out a little bit as much all the time. So I like that this time they have. So when Lashley does come, it's at its biggest impact and people can draw attention and it's the biggest attention getter. And I love having MVP on there, Shelton Benjamin, the matches that Shelton Benjamin is going to have against guys like a Will Ospreay and so many others. I'm just so excited about. Um, and then we'll see how this next iteration of like the hurt business will come about and you having think, Swerve involved will be awesome. Do you think eventually there would be a turn and Swerve would go with the Hurt Business at some point and Swerve not on everybody. And then all of a sudden, this is after, your, or can he be his own individual? Maybe, I mean, I definitely can see it further, a lot longer down the line. Yeah. Right now. But you want to stand, you want to have Swerve stand out on his own, I think, solo, like with just, you know, Nana and then kind of building him up, continuing to build him up. And I think that will go a long way right now. So I think, Obviously, there that's always the question when it comes to pro wrestling. So, but I think right now the build it will be like Swerve working through the whole group, whether it's Shelton Benjamin, Bobby Lashley, whoever it will be. Uh, we had ho uh, hologram versus the Beast Mortos, so two out of three falls. Was it too long? <laughs> um, you know, yeah, at this point, when you have a long pay per view, it can. I mean, they did kind of get the crowd involved, invested. So that was nice. I mean, I've been on hologram. I've been on a hologram fan. I forgot what they were calling the hologram fans, but I've been I'm on that for a fan. while. I'm a hologram fan. And people are like, okay, you just see him on collision and that's it. But now you're slowly starting to see him branch out. Clearly Tony Khan is a big fan of his and his style. And um, there was talk about him kind of wanting to expand internationally the reach of AEW. And so we're probably going to see a lot more of this international kind of uh, even more than we have before this international flavor on these shows. It remind me a lot of those, you know, WWE cruiserweight matches that we have on the pay-per-views where a lot of times there wasn't really like a rhyme or reason for it. Um, but they did get the crowd going because of how, you know, entertaining the match was. What I was going to say too, is, you know, there's so many people on social media talking about they're giving hologram the Bill Goldberg treatment of the undefeated streak, you know? Yeah such an interesting analogy to think we had like the bill goldberg big guy you know literally 
trouncing everybody and you've got <laughs> a hologram who's just an exceptional athlete yeah going through all these people it'll be interesting to see if they do hologram ricochet oh my gosh i don't you it's know what? all the traditionalists are going to freak out over that if that's, that ever happens the flips I, involved in that one whoa i would love to see hologram ricochet that's <laughs> that's that's what i'm saying um <clears throat> okay darby allen versus brody king I didn't love this match. I was kind of like, why is this in here? And, you know, I, you know, Darby's the Washington state guy, you know, like Brian Danielson and I get all that. But then I'm like, this match felt like I just felt it was, they didn't need the match. That's the thing. I didn't feel they needed that match in there. I love Darby and I know he needs a spot, but this kind of felt right. The whole mentality of needs a spot on AEW pay-per-views is always the issue that I have. Um, but if someone's paying $50 and you, I get Tony Khan's methodology of wanting to deliver, but at the same time, it does water down the card. Like does a match need to be on this show just for the sake of it. And you know, that's what I got. Like you said, the vibes there and some of the different spots as you know, the traditionalists uh, occasionally I'll be like, or someone that's very concerned about someone's well being. I'm watching and I'm like, Oh, uh, why did you, did you have to do that with the steps? Did you have to do that? Did this? And it's like, uh, but you know, it's, they're committed to doing it. So. Yeah. I just, I just didn't love, love that match. And then I, I thought coming off of the other matches, it kind of was, it took a little bit of the air out of it. And that was followed by another one that took the air out of it was, was the young bucks versus private party. Now uh -huh. they had everything kind of set up like, okay, you've got, um, uh, what's his name? The manager. Oh. Chris Statlander's former manager. <laughs> Stokely, yeah. Stokely Hathaway. Sorry, Stokely Hathaway there. And then you're showing, you know, um, the other guys there um, in the audience, the other uh, wrestlers. And I'm thinking, is something bad going to happen? And Isaiah was amazing in the match, but I never felt they were going to win, truly win. That was what, for me, that was the perfect opportunity to really make them. Like, have them pull off this huge upset. Can you imagine getting people talking like this big moment where the private party gets the win and it's finally happening? You don't get these opportunities very often. And it, if it's going to happen, it's it was almost like, um, I, I felt the same way when Cody didn't win against Roman Reigns. And I know it had happened a year later and everyone's talking about, okay, it was meant to be. But this was another scenario for me. Like this was an opportunity for private party to really come into their own and have their moment. And, you know, they didn't make it happen. And when it, if it does happen, it's not going to, you know, that was the moment right there for me because it was so unexpected that it would have been shocking to people. So I actually was, I know, I know they're like, Oh, that doesn't work. They were kidding around the young bucks on social media. That doesn't work for me, brother. But yeah, I saw that. Which was hilarious. But, ah, uh, like, Talk about that would be a moment to to, to talk about. Uh, it's really sad because they did beat them before. So I know, and Top Flight is who I meant to say in the audience. It was Top Flight that was their group was in the audience and Stokely. And I thought, are they going to be pissed that they got the opportunity, so they're going to come in and ruin the match? Like I just didn't feel it went anywhere, and it was very disappointing. It would have been such a celebratory moment that the underdogs can really you know, win, even if they had it, for, even if they had it for a week, the belts, you yeah. know, you know, I mean, it was I, like Prince Ikea beating William Regal. I mean, that was a shocking <laughs> moment. What a, great, Nitro. what a great one to bring up. <laughs> um, that one didn't work out though. So maybe yeah, that's not a good argument to have. <laughs> so then we go to the championship match, uh, John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. Now, I'm watching the match. First of all, I was shocked. I was expecting blood all over the place and there wasn't. I don't, that was number one. And then I, it for the end. The and then I was like, wait a minute. All of a sudden the match ended. Like all of a sudden he was out and there was no kind of build, like leading right into that moment. I didn't feel as the, as the viewer or the audience member that we were about, like it just kind of, it, I, I didn't feel the build at that moment. All of a sudden it was just like, it was over. And yeah. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, 
before before the entire beatdown. But I guess what we're learning from this, and we will is this is the NWO, is the BCC of of uh, of AEW. That's my thing. They're going to be this rogue group that beats the crap out of everybody, and 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 there's going to be some twists and turns. Um, one of which I think somebody made a comment on that I think sounds great is that Hook will actually be with the BCC and actually betrayed his father. That was one of the guesses. What did you think about the end of the match? Yeah, I mean, if this is going to be Brian Danielson's last match as a full-time performer and it's in the, the area where he, you know, he started, you know, where he's born, like his hometown crowd there, um, just a, a sad state of affairs. But, you know, it's not the end of his career. It's not his last match ever. If it was his last match ever, I think I would be a lot more, you know, like, what the hell were you doing here? But I feel, you know, it's it was a means to an end again, like having him win the championship. Um, Moxley, I guess, was the chosen guy by Brian to have the one that beat him in his last match as a full time performer. Um, so I think more people I think what they were AEW creative was looking at is like, oh, yeah, this is the match. But what you really want to talk about is after the match, we want to have you think about that, have that be the last visual, have that being everything that you know, the match, whatever, but also this beatdown is what we want you to talk about. Right, and that was the other thing that was a little weird. Number one, you know, the pacing of that, I was like, what's going on? And then you, what, I guess they've left us in this big thing, and then what did you think of the Wheeler U to turn? It was a nice, I mean, I know. there's nothing much about Wheeler that kind of got someone interested. He was a great wrestler. He kind of was a background player. Well, for a lot of the time, let's be honest within the group. So by him having this big turn, it kind of like, Oh wow, this guy is serious. This is someone we need to look out for. He's dangerous. He's someone like he's going to build this up. And then when Brian does eventually come back for the occasional match, That's he's going to elevate, he's going to elevate Wheeler up. And, and then this is the Wheeler's time to kind of, talk about why he did what he did. The follow-up is going to be the most important thing for Wheeler right now. Right. Is what is he going to say? What is he going to do to kind of yeah, yeah bring that to the forefront? What did you think about the fact that they're putting plastic bags, which is really <laughs> a murder? Oh um, my gosh. It's Danielson was like, and notice they're being, they have to be very careful about what clips they service on social media with, you don't see a lot of the bag. Right? No, they made sure to say that they are not showing that. We're not on showing it, media. and we're not talking about it, and we can't. Yeah, but they're literally putting a bag in a person, and we're literally paying a pay per view, and we're watching somebody be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that I mean, I still like the little uh, the background about you know Brian being so environmentally friendly. I know he's getting killed, you know, killed by his what you know what he can't stand which is like the plastic bags and things like that. I mean, now anytime someone goes paper or plastic, I'm going to think differently because of AEW. So <laughs> we've seen pa we've seen paper bags by the beautiful people and Cody Rhodes. And now we're going to plastic bags uh, of the, so that's their, their uh, choice of. So we also had that moment yeah. where out of nowhere, Jerry Lynn says to Orange Cassidy, you're the guy now you need to do right. Like that was leading us into right. That he's going to, lead of baby faces yeah i but love I, I love orange cassidy but for me i don't when you look at AEW and the who they're trying to get to be to stand up again i i just don't know i don't know if i can believe it like there's just i don't know about how you feel but there's something about it that just is like it's weird to me i feel like who is the safe like this is our saviors i'm not quite you have darby right Exactly. I'm like, you know, it should feel like a Cody Rhodes person, right? Like, yes. you know, like somebody a like. They need a Kenny Omega to come back. A Kenny Omega to they come back. They need a Kenny Omega to come back. Who's going to lead us that isn't here? <laughs> you know? And where the hell is Wardlow? Oh, I'm just so frustrated about the whole Wardlow situation, too. Uh, just Yeah, I mean. It, Ricky it, Starks is sitting on the sidelines yeah, telling not, us that he's not. Not Fishman. Wrestling extraordinaire. Let me ask you this. Rick <laughs> Sharks, what is that? <laughs> He's literally writing a thing like, I'm still here. I'm working out. <laughs> I'm with AEW. I'm not anywhere. I didn't go anywhere. I don't know. 
what is the deal? Are they punishing this guy or is he secretly with like, what do you think is going on? I mean, he's smart enough to know that it's, this is getting people to talk, but if he's under contract with this company and he's saying these things, he's trying to get let go or he's trying to, or he's clearly on the way out or he wants us to think that. And then he's going to come back and do something. I guess time is going to tell what, which direction it's going to be. But for now, as long as you're talking about him is something that he wants, you know, so he'll make the little, you know, tweet or X responses here and there to kind of get you guessing. But I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's also making the company look kind of stupid and Tony Khan look kind of stupid at the same time. Or you see someone who's on your payroll basically saying, you know, the fans love me. I'm in shape. I'm ready to go. And, you know, they're doing nothing with me. So it's just not a good look. Now, Jimmy Jacobs, that was the other big news, who was with the show, is left the show. It's to believe that he parted, he decided to leave, but they're there you want to freshen up the creative. Um, any thoughts on that? I think Jimmy is the guy right when they do the media calls, too. Um, Jimmy yeah, calls. yeah, yeah. He's been kind of like the second guy with uh, Tony Khan for the last yeah. year or two. So it's interesting to see that they made that decision or if he decided, I mean, it's going to come out. I'm sure when Jimmy Jacobs does an interview or something or other wrestling, what's up wrestling, right? Exactly. (laughs) But he did some really great things at TNA impact wrestling before going to AEW. So the guy clearly has a creative mind. Um, And of course what he did in ring of honor. So, so it's interesting that they are letting him go if that is the case or, you know, he's, Deciding to try his hand somewhere else. So we'll see. Well, as I wrote on Michael Fairman TV, I did a full review of AEW's Russell June 24. I gave it an A minus. I would have given it an A, but I didn't. I, the ending was a bit like what? And then I didn't love, like I said, those two matches leading into Moxley and Danielson. What's your grade? Yeah. Um, I think it's a fair A minus, B plus, borderline. I mean, did they give you your money's worth? They always do. Um, but you know, you're not going to like everything. It's just, I guess they wanted the ending to make, to leave a bad taste in your mouth. They wanted you to feel that. So that's a risk though, that you do take with an audience. And is it a risk that you want to take at the moment where it's so fragile right now when it comes to getting the fans invested in your product? That's the question. Yeah. I'm just, if they're going to do the NWO, which is kind of what I'm feeling, like it's going to be this, this click and then certain people are going to join it. And there'll be turns along the way, like a hook, like, you know, like if, if something like that were to happen, then we are literally an NWO of the 2025, 2024. <laughs> and if they do it, they've got to do it well. And a Shane McMahon coming in. That's the piece. Shane McMahon coming. Coming in. That would be huge. Like that, that's what would be a shot in the arm right there. That would be amazing. And I, and Shane is uh, the Shane that I know was a very, a, a very nice guy. That's all I can tell you. We need a McMahon episode. I'm telling you, he's McMahon living these little nuggets for us. The McMahon last episode. week with Vince, today with Shane. I mean, he's given us these little nuggets. Like you know, I'm he sure wants to talk, living, but not yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, real quickly, before I have to let you go, because I know you don't have a lot of time, I want to ask you really quick about WWE. Roman Reigns comes out on Friday, and there is a thing with Jimmy Uso. I'm concerned about how this story. Like, did is it weird? Does it feel a bit awkward? Like, where is this all leading? I it's think gonna, it's going to lead to Survivor Series where they're going to have a team coming together, slowly bringing the bloodline back together. Back the OGs. Together. Right, the OGs. Maybe, maybe Paul Heyman getting in the people's ear and recruiting. You know, we're going to see back. I mean, that's Sammy, clearly what they're going to do. Yeah. Sammy and Jay are coming back. Yeah, reuniting the group. Uh, I think that's where we're, we're headed. But the interesting thing for that is. The Bloodline story has largely been on SmackDown. So you're moving a raw guy to SmackDown to tell a story, or maybe they just bring some, just make it all SmackDown people instead and leave Jay doing Jay's thing because Jay's the Intercontinental Champion and they're trying to push him as a single star. And you don't want to risk that by putting him again with the Uzos team and Roman. So I can also see Jay not being involved in this scenario now when I yeah. more I'm thinking about it. Mm. And real quickly with Kevin Owens, uh, Randy Orton, and uh, Cody, we saw that it looked like Randy as you know was trying to keep the peace, and then he gets hit in the face by um, Kevin. And then, do you see 
eventually Randy turning on Cody and aligning with Kevin. Hmm. It's hard to say. Uh, at this moment, yeah, in time, it, I don't. Nobody. They need more uh, opponents for Cody. But Randy is just so beloved right now. Um, it's. I, I thought Royal Rumble, Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes is the way to go. But does it involve a heel turn? I'm not sure because we've already seen it with Kevin. And is it going to be too much rep repetition here? That's the risk that they have by going this by doing that. And Randy's so beloved right now. So it's hard for me to see that. So, but I guess that would make the heel turn hurt that much more. And yeah. And CM Punk is off. Is he off TV now and comes back to go against Seth? Yeah, I definitely think he steps away right now because he, that match was a, that was a classic, but it was a war. It took a lot out, but meanwhile you have Drew still hanging in there, but um, yeah, I think keeping him off for a little while is a good idea. Like making sure that he, he stays special, like an attraction, just like they did not as bad with Brock Lesnar, but in a sense where you guys keep, some, I always was a fan of like them coming for a couple months and then come leave like different people coming in and out to, to freshen things up. So it looks like they're going in that direction, especially when you have a Saudi Arabia show coming up where he's not feeling it. They kind of can keep him away from all that. Yes, the Saudi Arabia show and the belt. <laughs> the crown jewel belt. Yeah, don't get me All started. All right, well, I know we have to let you go. Thank you so much for your analysis of AEW Wrestling. I was even surprised you watched it. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot going on, but you know, there's just some things you got to take time for, right? <laughs> right. I really enjoyed it. I sat here all by myself. I did text Scott during What's it. your TV dinner? No, I'm just kidding. With my <laughs> snacks because it went on for seven hours. Um, so I, you know, and last thing to your point, I was going to say, you do make a really valid point that we have talked about. What WWE does well is on those premium live events, there's like five matches. And not everyone is featured and that's okay. And we get this, this group because this is the story we're telling. And sometimes AEW is trying to tell so much, um, which you kind of saw. Yeah, too much. There. I would have eliminated two of the matches, and I've been the whole zero hour thing with matches on that. I'm not a fan of that either, to be honest. So that's uh, you know, to each their own. Everyone has their own taste. That's just how I feel. Less is more sometimes. Right. All right. Well, have a good one, Scott. Have a great week. Thank you, everybody. Watch What's Up Wrestling. And you can see all of our episodes uh, on here on the Michael Fairman channel down below. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thank you.